The Mystery of the Shallow Graves Terrible account of the McStay family whose disappearance became an intriguing enigma. Family is the source of power. Every time we feel down, it's our family which gives us the much-needed ounce of strength. It's because of the family that an individual stands tall while battling the trials of time. However, what if this unit disintegrates at once? What if you are all together at one moment and then the devil of time takes everything and destroys the ideal picture of family? How would you react? Well, today's case resolves around such an ideal family where everything seemed perfect till it was found that none was going well, but there had been some dark secrets concealed behind the presence of perfection. Welcome to AF Crime, the channel that brings you fascinating crimes all around the world. If you're interested in this kind of content, this channel is for you. Make sure to like this video, click on the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated on our most recent uploads. Now, let's get right into the video and investigate more about the McStay family who was living a perfect life before they suddenly disappeared without a trace. Joseph and Summer McStay were a happy couple living in Fallbrook, California. They seemed satisfied with their lives because who wouldn't be? with two beautiful boys and successful jobs. They were parents to two amazing boys named Gianni, who was four years old, and Joseph Jr., who looked much like his father and was a three-year-old toddler. Joseph owned a successful company, which had the task of adding anesthetism to homes. His company dealt with constructing decorative items in houses. Joseph's wife, Summer, was also a successful working woman. She was among some of the most renowned real estate agents of Fallbrook. At parties, the couple was considered the most lively one because of Joseph's amazing sense of humor and Summer's friendliness. It seemed that everyone liked the family a lot because they had a lot of friends in the neighborhood. That was one reason why every big or small activity of the McStay family easily came to notice. It was an early spring evening in Fallbrook in 2010 when the surveillance camera of McStay's family neighbor captured something strange. It was footage of McStay's Isuzu Trooper, which they had been owning since 1996. It was strange because the neighbor had rarely seen them moving away in such late evenings as it was 7.47 p.m. Considering that the couple had two young children, the neighbor knew knew that neither Summer nor Joseph had the habit of leaving their children alone at home except when it was extremely necessary. And even at that time, Joseph's brother or father was there to be with the children. Though it was a strange thing to notice, the neighbor didn't pay any attention because he thought that they might have gone together at a family dinner. So this was brushed off quickly. However, things started getting really eerie when the vehicle didn't pull back to their driveway even the next day and then the next. At this point, the other neighbors also started noticing that during these two days, no one in the McStay family stepped out of the house, which made them worried because the McStays were liked by many due to their affectionate nature. So they decided to call the family and ask about their well-being. However, they found no answer at the other end, which enhanced their apprehensions. The vehicle had moved out of the house on February 4th, but a week had passed and nothing was found about the McStay family's whereabouts. On February 13th, Joseph's brother Michael decided to get into the house and find out about the family. At that time, the friends and the family also had this reservation that maybe there was an attempted burglary in the house, which eventually ended on a bad note, or somehow the McStay family was locked up in their house, or an even worse situation might have happened with them. To kill these burning questions, Michael climbed the main wall of the residence and entered the house from the back. Upon entry, he found that the back window was open, which clearly hinted that a burglary had taken place within the house. Suppressing all of his concerns, when he entered from the same window, he found the house completely empty. There was utter silence in the house, and no one was there except for the two dogs that the family owned. It was strange because the McStay family was very careful about caring for their dogs. So Michael realized that some unfortunate incident might have trapped the family in its grip. Without any further delay, he called the San Diego County Sheriff and informed the cops about the disappearance of the entire family and the time period which had passed. The cops were issued a search warrant for the place and they started sorting out any particular trace which would help them in finding out more about the McStays. An alert about the family was also issued to nearby neighborhoods where the cops provided details about the physical appearances of the family and the trooper which they had employed to leave. As they started searching for evidence, they found no such proof which hinted at the use of force or a fight in the house. Everything was in its place. 
There seemed to be no disturbance at all. Yet, one bizarre thing was noticed while checking up on the entire house. The cops found they must have left very urgently for some reason because their shopping was sitting there at the counter and even the snacks of the two children were resting in the bowls at the coffee table of the living room. It hinted that the children never knew that they were about to leave the house as they were simply picked up by their parents while they were having their snacks during their TV time. Now, one thing was clear, the family had moved out of the house on their own accord and no one forced them to leave. Yet, the burning question was why they had to leave their place in such a hurry, which also connected the presumption to the second part, and that was the presence of an unknown, unseen danger which had made the family leave their place. At that time, the cops received the update that the family's trooper was sighted at a parking lot in San Ysidro on February 8th. The place where the trooper was found was very close to the Mexican border. Rather than easing up the mystery, this new update made it further difficult for the police to assess the truth. They were believing that the family might have crossed the border of their own will, but why? That was the part which was still not sorted out. On the contrary, the family members and friends were still not believing that this assumption of the police as they believed that everything over there was going extremely well for the McStay family and even if they had left, they would have informed someone for sure because it was unlikely of them to move out without giving a single trace of their displacement. It was a fight between emotions versus reasoning. The police further supported their argument by the fact that no trace of the family was found after February 8th, right when the trooper was seen parked. At that point, a very close relative of Summer McStay revealed a shocking thing. She believed that the family couldn't leave so easily and cross the Mexican border in a whim of panic because Summer's passport was expired. At this point, I would like to inform you all that apparently it's possible to cross the Mexican border without a passport. Yet, as part of the legal obligations, the passport is checked. Another important revelation followed this statement when it was found that the bank accounts of Joseph and Summer had almost $100,000 combined, and not even a penny was withdrawn during this period of disappearance. Now, that was really unlikely because if a family moves out, then they are going to need money for absolute reasons. As the case was progressing, it was getting more and more complex because there was no trace of the family and no valid reason was formulated in this period. Now, the police were once again back at the starting point. This time, however, they took an alternative turn and tried to solve the case from the perspective of the family, which was that the McStay family had become a victim of an unfortunate tragedy. They searched the house once again and found that the family had searched a lot about moving to Mexico. They had searched about life over there, plus also searched for active sources which could help them in learning Spanish effectively. This time, however, the police didn't believe this dimension of the case which was in front of their eyes. Taking help from the cellular network of the family, they eventually found that Joseph had made a last call prior to his disappearance to his friend and business partner Charles Chase Merrick. Now the police had finally found their first suspect in the case. Merrick was inquired and he confessed that James had called him, but he couldn't answer because he was watching TV at that time. Merrick further passed the polygraph test and was eventually released because of no solid evidence against him. At that point, many in the police department had hinted that the family had somehow crossed the Mexican border of their own will and things started becoming grave in 2011 when the radio host Rich Baker wrote a book on this disappearance. He had written this book after conducting hundreds of interviews, including Joseph's brother Michael as well. He made many revelations based on whatever statements he had gathered from the interviews. The gravest of all was his presumption about Summer McStay. He claimed that somehow Summer had murdered his whole family and was afraid to confess this in front of the world, so she eventually escaped to Mexico. This belief of him was followed by Merritt's statement that Summer had anger issues, which had eventually made Joseph the victim of a mysterious disease. However, Joseph's father, Patrick McStay, negated this assumption as he believed that both of them were living a happy life. The case was extended for further two years when in November 2013, the riddle was finally solved about the disappearance. It was solved by a dirt biker who was biking in the area of Victorville, California. His bike encountered two shallow graves during his ride. 
Upon stopping, he found that the bikes were too shallow and the remains were easily visible from the surface. He found the skulls of four persons in those two shallow graves. He became afraid and informed the local police immediately. Just when the police arrived, they raised their doubts that these remains could be of the McStay family, but that was a far-fetched thought without any logical evidence. So they conducted DNA testing of the remains, and it was found that these remains were of the unfortunate McStay family. At that time, Patrick McStay, the father of Joseph McStay, informed Jerry Dean, who was the missing persons advocate. He made this revelation public. Initial forensics revealed that the family members were hurt by a blunt instrument over their heads, and that led to their instantaneous deaths, which were later revealed to be a sledgehammer as it was found in one of the graves. Though now, the remains were found, the potential motive behind the killings was still unknown, as well as the criminal involved in the killings was roaming free. In this situation, the lost trooper of the McStay family was finally found, and this led to a very big discovery. On the trooper, the DNA of Merrick was revealed that there were more than what he was telling. He was arrested in November 2014 on the account of his connection with the disappearance. Initially, he negated all this, but ultimately he revealed that he was there hours before the couple disappeared because he had a clash with Joseph on the issue of money. He told the police that the clash had taken an extreme form when Joseph ordered him to leave his place. After he left the place, the family quickly decided to leave for Mexico, and at that point he decided to kill them under the pretense of their escape to Mexico. Though, Merritt later refused to accept this. The prosecution believed that financial gains were the basic motive behind the murder. They also give the evidence of a $21,000 check, which was forged by Merritt on the account of Joseph two days after the disappearance of the McStay family. The reason behind this forgery was his endless addiction to gambling, as he was also found in several casinos in the days following the disappearance. Merritt's trial began in July 2015 and continued for the next five years because he was not satisfied with his attorneys. He changed five attorneys throughout the trial, and at one point, he defended himself before the trial. In June 2019, he was proven guilty of the murders and was sentenced to death on January 21, 2020. This way, the biggest mystery was unraveled before the world. This case manifests how far greed can take a person that eventually he no longer hesitates to murder a three-year-old child. Probably that's why greed is considered one of the deadliest sins, because it dissolves the barrier between right and wrong, leading the person to a dead end. If you feel that this case was an intriguing one, like this video and share it with all your friends. Also, subscribe to our AF Crime channel for finding more shocking tales around the world. And if you have any criminal case that you'd like me to investigate, share it in the comment section below.